uh, Lily, my daughter, was celebrating her seventh birthday on the 28th of July. And the day before, when I played recital in the church, she came on stage for the last encore. And I played together with her, Bach, Gounod, and Maria, which was, of course, quite unforgettable. Not really, no, no. I try to be very flexible because, you know, in our life, traveling all over, you encounter completely different situations uh, before the concert. And if you have strict rituals, then you are inevitably have to face unpleasant surprises. Rostropovich, definitely. As long as I remember myself and I decided to start playing cello at the age of eight, it was him for the longest time. Oh, in 1965, when I was 17 years old, in, in old Russian competition, which was first of the selection to participate in Tchaikovsky competition. And it was its first time I went to Moscow. That was actually the main reason I wanted to participate in this competition, just to go to Moscow. And without any expectations of winning, and it was a total surprise for myself, but that was 1965, yes. <laughs> Extremely early, because, you know, growing up in former Soviet Union, with both parents working, uh, there was not much supervision, and I was a very wild child. <laughs> I'm sure it was very early as well. You know how children are. It's innocent lies. So the age of 14, when I came to study in boarding, music boarding school in Leningrad, St. Petersburg, and uh, encountered this beautiful young lady who was unfortunately two years older than me. At this age, it was I didn't have any chance. But actually, four years later, something happened. So anyway, it was really big first love, yes. <laughs> there are so many things that I would love to do and probably never will, <laughs> which would, would be for the first time, even paragliding, for example, <laughs> or flying an aeroplane. In Soviet Union, we didn't have nightclubs. There was even a joke. Uh, the foreign tourists in St. Petersburg asked, the concierge of the hotel, where's the nearest nightclub? And the answer was, in Helsinki. <laughs> Ooh, well over 100, that's for sure, because I love raclette. Quite a bit as well, too much probably, but in the same time, I must proudly say that living in Belgium, we are very proud of our Belgian chocolates as well. It looks like me, no? But quite a while back, yeah, with different color of hair and different kind of beard. And some people said it didn't change much, but obviously I did. She's perfectly normal and it's okay. That's even earlier, yes. I was really skinny. Uh, but, you know, it's a nice picture, actually. I don't even think I have it. Can I get a copy sometime? Thank you. Oh, Martula. This is really a long time ago. It's really early stage of our collaboration with great Marta Argerich, who is my, one of my closest friends and stage companions since 43 years and counting. 
Oh, they are. This is, of course, a memorable moment when Lily joined me on stage in the first festival. <laughs> she lost her tooth just before going on stage. It was hanging like this and she pulled it out. <laughs> it's quite incredible. I don't know. It's the first time I see the pictures next to each other with Sylvester Stallone. I never understood why many people, until now, even uh, find some kind of similarity with Sylvester Stallone. I really don't see it. <laughs>